apologize to the simultaneous translators because I have no idea how you would translate this into <laughs> Japanese. Um, so one of the things we've talked a lot about over the last few kernel releases is the introduction of Rust into the kernel. And um, I think it has been relatively steady and quiet. What's your perception? Well, so Rust still is at this point where we don't, we have the initial infrastructure got merged last year. Um, it's been growing, but we don't have any part of the kernel that really depends on Rust mm -hmm. yet. To me, Rust was one of those things that A, it made technical sense, but to me personally, even more important was that we need to not stagnate as, as a kernel and as developers. And um, so I am always excited by trying something new and not getting too comfortable doing the same thing. I mean, I've been working on, on the kernel now for 32 years. Uh, yeah, 32 years. And that's a long time to work on one single thing, but it's still interesting because it's not the same single thing. I mean, Linux 32 years ago was very different from what Linux is today, obviously. And, and I actually often look for things where, where we can do new things and we can do things differently because it's so easy to get stuck in a rut and say, this is working just fine, right? And, and Rust has not really shown itself as the next great big thing, but I think during next year, we'll actually be starting to integrate drivers and some even major subsystems that are starting to actively use it. So it's one of those things. It's going to take years before it's a big part of the kernel, but it's, uh, it's certainly shaping up to be one of those. Things. So you're writing Rust code yourself? You're reviewing oh, no. Rust code? Oh, no, no, no. I have been reading Rust code a bit just so that I can make some kind of judgment calls on, on when something is too horrendous to be included in the kernel. But I have to admit, no, I, um, I mean, the kernel, we rely on literally thousands of people. Yes. Every single release we have a thousand people involved, and they're not the same thousand people. Quite often we have people, in fact, for the longest time we've had the statistics be roughly that every release, about half the people involved send just one patch. And a lot of them never show up again. They may have something small they wanted to fix that they cared about, and they were not really kernel people. They found it for some other reason, and they sent their small patch to the kernel, and they were never interested in doing anything more. But then the other half keeps coming back. And, and when it comes to Rust, I'm not going to be the one who manages the Rust code mm -hmm. because that's not my expertise, as is true of so many other parts of the kernel. Uh, I'm honestly, I'm less of a programmer these days than I am. I call myself a technical lead because I'm not, I'm not a manager. I don't manage people, I manage code. So I call myself a technical lead. I'm not, I'm not my day-to-day -day work is not programming. It is uh, merging other people's codes and, and Rust will be one of those things. 